everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Impromptu Reviews. I'm Ryan Reed. So last night, I got a chance to see Rob Zombie's new movie, Three From Hell. Right now, it is in theaters for a Fathom event. So what that means is that the film is only available for three nights. I got to see it on September 16th. As of this recording, you have two more chances to see it, uh, either tonight, September 17th, or tomorrow, September 18th. Uh, after that, I've heard that it's probably going to be out on Blu-ray and DVD in October, so you don't have too long to wait. So, Three From Hell is a direct sequel to Devil's Rejects, which is a direct sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses. Without going into too many spoilers, the film revolves around Otis, Baby, and Captain Spaulding having survived the end of Devil's Rejects and have now been in prison for years. The film deals with their time in prison and them trying to escape and eventually go on the run. I really, really liked this movie. I liked this movie a whole lot. Uh, it's different than any other Rob Zombie film. I, I really think that this is his most mature and introspective movie. And that's not to say that his other movies haven't had substance. And that's not to say Rob Zombie is not mature. Obviously, he's in his 50s. I'm sure he's play mature at this point, but I more mean that the film deals with a lot of different topics, a lot of existential um, crisis things that I was not expecting a film about a psychopathic family to deal with. So let's dive into it. The film goes from kind of a prison movie to a sort of Western uh, motif later on, again, without going into spoilers about what actually happens, but it's a, it's a fascinating movie to watch because Rob Zombie allows the film a lot of time to breathe. There are moments where characters just sit and chat with each other about life and what it means, and, and, and that was really interesting. Rob Zombie seems much more fascinated with kind of getting into the mind of these characters a little bit more than showing just the brutality of them. Obviously, each film we've gotten a little bit more into that, but here the film feels more interested in dealing with what the effects of the violence and the implications of the violence are versus outright showing them. Now, don't get me wrong, there are still really, really brutal moments in this movie. This movie is not for the squeamish. It is still very disturbing, very unsettling at times. But there are also a lot of other times where Rob Zombie chooses to not show what happens. Um, he'll either imply things with the way his camera shots are um, and then show us the aftermath or cut away to things. He's, he's much more interested in the psyche of these characters than he is dealing with just the out-and-out -out brutality of them. And I think that's a smart move because this film definitely could have had a been-there-done-that feel. And to be fair, it kind of does. One of my, probably my only real complaint about this movie is that the film follows a lot of really similar beats to The Devil's Rejects. Um, again, I don't want to spoil anything, but the way things play out, the very broad strokes of the film are very much the kind of same thing we dealt with with Devil's Rejects. Um, and that's a little bit of a bummer. But the film is different enough that within those broader plot beats, we have very different segments in between. Um, and so the film doesn't feel like it, it's just Devil's Rejects over again. It feels like a very different movie. But I was watching it going, man, this feels really familiar. I feel like I've seen this before. And I kind of had. It was <laughs> Devil's Rejects. But if you're going to follow the same plot beats of a movie, I mean, that you've made before, Devil's Rejects is probably not a bad one to pick for these characters. And speaking of the characters, the cast is amazing as always. Of course, Bill Mosley is back as Otis, giving a very strong performance. Um, again, we get to see a lot of quiet moments with Otis, which we're not used to. Uh, if you, you know, you get a few of those in Devil's Rejects, but more so here, it's a very, very more subdued Otis. Again, he's still deranged and just unsettling, but there's a lot of just kind of moments where he's more laid back, um, and that's fascinating to see. Sherry Moon Zombie plays Baby, and her performance is amazing. I know a lot of people have said, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like Cherry Moon Zombie's acting. I this I think this movie will prove any of them wrong. I've always liked her performances. I've always enjoyed what she brought to the movies. This baby is very different. Again, a lot of quiet moments with the character. A lot of moments with the character in solitary, and we see kind of what's happened to her mind. 
What, what happens when a crazy person goes even crazier, basically? And there's some, some really sad moments in this movie with Baby. And that's, that's tough to pull off. Somehow, with the combination of Rob Zombie's script and his directing and the cast, you have moments where you maybe have just seen these people murder somebody and it's disturbing and horrific. But then 10 minutes later, you have a really quiet scene with them and them thinking about what their life means or talking about their, you know, their family. The movie wants you to see different sides of these characters that we've never seen before. And that's a really smart choice. Um, again, nothing in... <laughs> the film is not trying to make you go that these characters are good people. It, not at all. They're awful, awful characters, awful human beings, but the movie gives them moments to get their own thoughts out, get their thoughts on life out, and that's interesting to watch. Uh, Richard Brake is also in the movie. He plays a new character named Foxy. A lot of people know him from Game of Thrones, but he was also Doomhead in Rob Zombie's 31, and he had a really small part in Halloween too. Uh, and he fits right in. Um, he is the third in The Three from Hell. He plays off of Bill Mosley really, really well. Um, there's a scene with a back and forth between them in a hotel that's really funny. That's the other great thing about this movie. It's really funny at times. Devil's Rejects had moments like that as well, but here it's like, there are moments where the humor is very well placed. Um, and you wouldn't think you'd be laughing at something, but the, the, the script is so strong that there's a great joke and it lands and it's a lot of that is because of the performances of the actors. The one downfall character wise, I think unfortunately is there's not a lot of Captain Spaulding. And again, I don't wanna go into spoilers as to what happens in the actual movie, but if you followed any behind the scenes stuff, you know Sid Haig has not been in the best health as of lately. And so because of that, uh, he's not in the movie a ton, which is a bummer. Uh, I, a lot of fans, including myself, love Captain Spaulding, and I would have loved to see more of him in the movie, but I can't knock the movie for that because that's something that was kind of unavoidable. Uh, that said, what we do get of Captain Spaulding is really good. He's got a really great monologue in the movie, and um, there's some really, really cool small moments with him. Um, the rest of the supporting cast is also really good. Uh, Rob Zombie has kind of created this theater troupe from all the movies he's done, and he picks and chooses who he wants to be in it. You know, Dee Wallace is in the film as a prison guard, and there's a couple other people that show up, and everyone gives a really good performance. Everyone understands the type of movie they're in, but they're also not just playing one-note characters. Everyone's got, even if it's minor, everyone's got a little bit of an arc, which I really dug. The film is well shot, it's very stylized, it's very keeping with that Rob Zombie motif, it's very 70s, it's got a lot of 70s wipes in it, and a lot of kind of different colors. It's a very gritty film. Um, again, it plays like a prison movie and like a western, and so based on what part of the movie you're in, the cinematography changes a little bit. You might get a lot of really tight close-ups in the prison section, and then later on it widens up a little bit, the scope becomes a little bigger. Again, kudos to that. The film plays around with the genres and, and within its cinematography as well. Overall, I don't really have anything bad to say about Three From Hell, with the exception of, you know, a little bit of a been there, done that feel with the plot. It's, it's a really good movie. It's a really interesting movie. It's really different. It's very different than what I anticipated, and I am pleasantly surprised with that. Um, I was going in expecting another Rob Zombie, you know, just brutal, everyone is a crazed, hillbilly, disturbing, awful person movie. Um, and what I got was a very kind of, was, was that plus some very somber, quiet moments, uh, dealing with more with who these characters are. And I, I really enjoyed that. I liked seeing Rob Zombie take a different approach to uh, these characters. And it, with each outing with them, he's he's grown in telling their story, and the characters have grown as well. Um, and the film doesn't ex doesn't ask you to like these characters, um, but it does, you know, ask you to sit with them on another section of their journey if you want. Overall, I highly recommend Three from Hell. If you get a chance to go see it in theaters, please go see it in theaters. If not, like I said, it'll be out on Blu-ray soon. Um, but it's one I would really recommend to everybody. That said, I would recommend it to everybody who is a fan of The Devil's Rejects or House of a Thousand Corpses or just a fan of Rob Zombie's movies in general. Uh, if you like those movies, you're going to get what you want, and I honestly think more. Um, it's, it's much more of a character study, and I, I really, really appreciate the film for that. 
But if you do not like Rob Zombie movies, if you are not a fan of anything he's made, this movie is not going to change your mind. It is, it is still dealing with horrible people. It is still dealing with brutality and violence and disturbing imagery. It is not necessarily always fun to sit and watch. It's not going to be just like super lighthearted film. It's not like he's turned it into something that the film series is not. But it is totally worth seeing if you enjoy his style of filmmaking. Highly recommend it. Please give it a watch. Give it a shot. Sit back and enjoy another outing with the Firefly family. If you like content like this though, please subscribe to our channel. We have all kinds of different videos. We have more impromptu reviews, which is me reviewing movies new to theaters or new to DVD and Blu-ray. If you like a more scripted analytical approach to horror movies, check out Fright Films, which is my horror movie kind of discussion show. Um, and if you like true ghost stories, true scary stories, check out the Paranormal Tapes, which is my conversations with people I know about their true life stories of the supernatural. Plus we have some other stuff on the channel as well. So please subscribe to our channel and like every other YouTuber says, please click that notification bell to know when new videos are coming out. Uh, it really helps me out and I really appreciate it. So yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.